Ça passe na boule. On today's video, we're going to be talking about the importance of the Haitian community in Florida, its history, and what is going on with the Haitian community in the year 2024 in the beautiful state of Florida. In the past, when there's been turmoil in Haiti or Cuba or anywhere in the Caribbean, it's been followed by refugees seeking shelter in the state of Florida. And that's why the state of Florida has Haitian, Cuban, Dominican, Bahamas, all these Caribbean nations have historically had a strong presence in the state of Florida. Florida is almost synonymous with Caribbean vibes when you think about Florida, in particular South Florida, Latin influence. But currently, Florida's governor is against allowing more refugees to enter the state. And that's what sparks today's curiosity about Haitian Americans. Who are these people? What have they accomplished in Florida? And why do they keep seeking to come to this particular state? I think we all understand the idea that Haitians are coming to Florida right now because things in Haiti are getting bad. But let's learn a little bit more about who these people are and step away from the mainstream rhetoric. There are over 1 million Haitians in the United States and almost half of them live in the state of Florida, making up almost 3% of Florida's total population. Southeast Florida, the state's largest metropolitan area, is 6% Haitian, home to over 330,000 Haitians. Alright, so before we learn about Haitians in Florida, let's learn a little bit about Haiti's history. In 1791, Haitians petitioned France for citizenship. They felt that the white oppressors, the slave owners, were actually the ones who had revolted against France. Not that the Haitian Revolution were Haitians revolting against France, but that the slave owners were the ones who did not believe in the ideologies of the French. By 1793, the French were in the middle of their own revolution. They actually beheaded their own king, and like the Spaniards and the English who had kings, the French were moving towards an ideology of equality. And the Haitian Revolution wasn't a revolt against the French, it was Haitians deciding that they wanted to be French citizens and treated equally. In Paris, it was accepted and one million enslaved blacks were now French citizens. However, on the island, the plantation owners, the slave masters, were in complete disgust, and they went on to refuse any treaty with their newly found freed slaves. The island of Hispaniola was split between the French and the Spanish, and the Spaniards supplied weapons to the Haitian slaves because they figured if they could get rid of French rule on the island, then they would have a better chance to control Latin America. While cotton ruled the English Empire, for the French, it was sugarcane. Sugar production was the heart of Haiti's economy, and thus, when the Haitians revolted, they destroyed every trace of slavery, which means that after the Haitian Revolution, there was no economy, nothing left in Haiti. They destroyed every single element of the economy to ensure that the slave masters would have nothing to come back to. Haitians insisted on avoiding conflict and using democracy and diplomacy to ensure that they could have treaties, but in the long run, that didn't work. France ended up literally bleeding Haiti dry, charging Haitians an extensive amount of money for their quote-unquote freedom, which in turn turned Haiti into the most bankrupt nation on earth. Yes, they were free, but they were dearly indebted to France. While in the United States, African Americans were not able to capture their own freedom, the brave Haitians were able to ensure the freedom of their own country to run independently. Unfortunately, however, they had nothing to work with. Economically, they were alienated by the stronger empires who did not like the notion of a free black nation, and the French, who for the ideological sake of things, decided to charge a premium. The Haitians chose 
pride over money, and the French were able to exploit it. And in that, it left Haiti in somewhat of a no-direction economy. Yes, you are free, but what do you do now with your freedom? There have been no foundation, no basis, or even no predecessors into what happens to a nation when they are freed from slavery. What direction do they go? What will the economy be? None of that was determined. And unfortunately, this lack of direction continues to plague the country of Haiti until today. And that is why now, in the midst of 2024, we are seeing the possibility for another massive migration of Haitians into Florida as the country continues to be in turmoil. Interestingly enough, it was those Haitians who revolted against the French who were in fact more French citizens than the white French slave masters who abandoned the ideology of human equality, which became a basis of the French Revolution, and thus, those slaves were not revolting against the French, they actually wanted to be part of the French Empire, they wanted to be equal partners in the French Revolution. And in a sense, those Haitians were more French than the Frenchmen themselves who enslaved them, who ran off to Cuba or Louisiana, abandoning their French citizenship because they refuse to accept the changing times. Interestingly enough, I feel like the same thing is also happening in Florida, where many of these Haitian Americans are more American than the actual Americans who don't want these Haitians here. Let's get into that. See, despite the fact that the Haitians were revolting against the French rule of slave owners, they actually, in ideology, wanted to be French more than anything. And today, a lot of these Haitian Americans are more profoundly tied to the ideology of the American freedom than many of the Americans who say that they don't want Haitians here. And in a sense, thus, just like those Haitians were more French than the French, slave masters who went to Cuba and became Spaniards or to Louisiana to speak English, well, I feel that today, Haitian Americans in Florida are even a bigger part of the American dream or the American ideology than many Americans who claim that the Haitians don't belong here. Let me explain. The United States was founded by Englishmen, Irish, and other Europeans who fled oppression and violence and turmoil and hunger in Europe and came risking their lives in boats to the shores of the United States. If that isn't what these Haitians are doing right now, then I don't know what could be more American. There's nothing more American than fleeing hunger and oppression, getting on a boat, and sailing to the edge of America. That is how the United States was founded, and that is how these Haitians that are coming to the United States today are arriving here. It seems like that is the most American thing you could do. And not just come to the United States, but come to the United States to be successful. Let's talk about the Haitian American community in the United States. Take Port St. Lucie, where 4% of the population is Haitian. Orlando, where 3% of the population is Haitian. Miami, where almost 3% of the population is Haitian. Tampa, where about 1% of the population is Haitian. And even now, Jacksonville, 0.7% of the population being Haitian. Most Haitians do not live in these large cities, but they prefer suburbs. Golden Glades, Florida, 13,000 Haitians. Pine Hills, a suburb of Orlando, 12,000 Haitians. Boynton Beach, 12,000 Haitians. Miramar, Florida, 12,000 Haitians. Pompano, 10,000 Haitians. Many of these suburbs are going to be between, between 7 to 33% Haitian in South Florida. Take North Miami, which is 33% Haitian. Currently, Broward County, Florida has seen a huge influx of Haitians. And while historically it was Dade County, Miami that was home to the Haitian community, it looks like now Broward County is really the Haitian stronghold in South Florida. What is the reputation that Haitian Americans have in the state of Florida? I have worked with many Haitians over the years, and they seem to have among the best reputation of any nationality for employees. They are punctual, they are well-groomed, they are polite, they are hardworking, and very respectful. Over the years in South Florida, I've worked with people of many nationalities. Mexicans, Cubans, Guatemalans, but none are more a joy than 
Haitians. Haitians really are the best workmates you can have. They seem to mind their own business, do their own job, refuse to do anything that doesn't pertain to them, and thus they stay out of other people's businesses. What a better workmate could you ask for than Haitians? And what industries do Haitians predominantly go for? In the state of Florida, female Haitians have a great reputation in the healthcare industry, in particular with taking care of elderly people, people in hospice. They usually are going to prefer Haitian American staff because they feel that they are warm, caring, and embracing, and thus they become a favorite of most of the people that are patients in these facilities because they are in charge of providing the absolute best care, love, and attention for their patients. As well as in hospitality, when you talk about hotels in Florida, many times when traveling across the United States, I have found that hotels in Florida are much cleaner. The hygiene, the cleanliness in hotels in Florida is known to be among the best in the entire state. And that is to be thanks to predominantly a large percentage of Haitians who work in hospitality. As you travel to other states like Arkansas, Alabama, Missouri, where they don't have a significant Haitian population, you're going to find that the hotels are usually pretty freaking disgusting. But here in the state of Florida, we have Haitian mamas, and they do a beautiful job of keeping our hospitality clean, which means that if you're traveling in Florida, make sure you say merci and give a good tip to the staff at your hotel, because chances are it's going to be exceptionally clean because Haitian Americans are known for that. It's no secret that cuisine in Florida is one of the main reasons that tourists love our state. The state of Florida has Cuban, Venezuelan, Haitian, all types of cuisine. But it usually doesn't matter what type of cuisine is being cooked. If there's a chef in the kitchen and the customers are happy, there's a good chance that the person cooking is of Haitian descent because Haitians are known to be among the best chefs in Florida. I worked at a bistro in Naples, Florida directly under a French chef and he would actually sit there and study how the Haitians would cook to figure out how he could copy them because they were exceptional chefs. And it is not a secret that in the state of Florida, if you're having a good meal at a fancy restaurant, particularly expensive dining along the coast, you can be almost certain that the cooks in the back are going to be I-10. But what is more American than being self-employed? In fact, that is the most American thing you can do when it comes to working. And in that case, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in the Haitian community. In fact, Haitians are known for being entrepreneurs. And many young Haitians today are taking advantage of the economical freedoms that the state of Florida offers to be self-employed and become very wealthy through their own hands, their own businesses. The state of Florida is known for its Latin infusion. I don't know if you guys know this, Haitians are actually Latinos because they come from Latin America. They're not Hispanics because they do not descend from Spaniards, at least most of them don't. Thus, Haitians are not Hispanics, but they are Latinos, and Florida is known for Latino fusion, Latino vibes, and our culture. What do Haitians bring to the table? Among the youth, quite literally the most popular artist right now in the United States is Kodak Black, a Haitian American from Pompano, Florida, that with his unique style and Haitian flavor has pretty much taken over the rap scene. If you're into hip hop, you most certainly know the name Kodak Black, and he is Haitian American. Many generations back, it was Wyclef. When it comes to music, you'll be surprised to know that many of your favorite hip hop artists and singers could be of Haitian descent. However, most Haitian Americans do not listen to hip hop, they listen to traditional Haitian music called Compa. On today's video description, you're going to find a playlist that I personally made that features a great collection of Compa music. If you've ever wondered what the beautiful music of Haiti sounds like, make sure you watch that after you finish watching my video. Haitians have been dearly influential in the evolution of hip-hop. If you guys remember Lil Wayne when he came out, he would rock the Haitian bandana. And from that point forward, Haitian American music has been influencing hip-hop for a long time. And many of the sounds that we hear today throughout the United States are originating in South Florida. A vast majority of that talent today coming from descendants of Haitian Americans. 
And many American artists like Plies, Trick Daddy, Pitbull, Rick Ross, and other names that are known in the state of Florida are almost always going to give credit to Haitian Americans in their music. So we can say that when it comes to American culture, Haitians are not just a background element. They have brought their town to the forefront. And right now, one of the leading sounds in America is the sound of South Florida through the voice of Haitians. They have been able to push their culture to the forefront of a very industrialized and competitive world, showing the talents that they have when it comes to music. You can find Haitian restaurants in most Florida cities. If you've never tried Haitian food, I definitely recommend it. It's laid out like most Latin American food, but it's a lot spicier. Many times these restaurants are not actually going to have a menu you select from, but you ask the chef what the meal of the day is, somewhat similar to the French soup du jour. So if you've never been to a Haitian restaurant, it can be a little intimidating because you don't actually always get a menu. You kind of just ask them what they have. Usually asking them what their soup of the day is and combining that with rice. Griot is a very popular Haitian dish, which is fried pork chunks with a spicy sauce. Usually Haitians are going to run their beans through a blender and thus their bean soups are going to be more a soup than actual beans like you would have in most Latin American cuisine. So if you're open minded to trying some new cuisine, I definitely recommend Haitian American restaurants. Just be open minded to the idea that it's not so much what you want, but what they have. One of my all-time favorite Haitian restaurants is Coco's in Fort Lauderdale. Now, I will tell you the neighborhood is absolutely grimy, so just keep that in the back of your mind. But I get my griot there. Currently, the governor of Florida has made it clear that he wants to keep Haitians out of Florida. Meanwhile, in Canada, their prime minister there in Quebec has said that if any Haitian speaks the French language, which many of them do, they are welcome to move into that province and have legal status there. And in Montreal, there's currently a large Haitian community. We visited that community and this is what it looked like. So while the head of Florida is saying we don't want Haitians here, the heads of states in Canada are saying, hey, if you speak our language, you have the right to be here. Come on over and be part of our community. What a difference. Many Haitians are now settling in Mexico as well and refusing to cross the border into the United States, knowing the hate and racism that exists here. And in Mexico, Haitians are starting to create their own communities and they are known as being hardworking people. Haitians are starting to be beloved in Mexico right now because as the Mexicans say, they're willing to do anything for a peso and do not hesitate to work. Thus, the Haitian community that now exists in Mexico is getting a fairly good reputation for being hard workers, never saying no to work. So while many places like Florida are now closing the door on Haitians, despite the fact that Haitians are part of the fiber culture and history of Florida, places like Mexico and Canada are definitely reaping the benefit of the desire and ability of the Haitian people. Unfortunately, over the last few decades, Haitians have become accustomed to living in very difficult conditions, especially after that great earthquake that Haiti had and many other natural disasters. Many people in Haiti have become accustomed to living in fairly unsanitary conditions, unhoused, homeless, and shanty towns. And thus, those people are going to be having a much more difficult challenge adapting to civilized life in a country like Canada or the United States. Many years back, it was only a small percentage of Haitians that you could tell were from the slums. But today, many of the Haitians that are coming, a vast more percentage of them, are coming from shanty towns and slums. And you can just about tell the difference by watching how they behave. It's a difference between somebody who grew up in a normal civilized society versus somebody who over many years has been homeless, living in shanty towns or tents, those people are gonna have some difficulty. Look at it as somebody who's been homeless for many years or somebody who's coming out of prison for a very long time. When they come out, they need time to readjust to the world. And unfortunately today, the conditions in Haiti have deteriorated so much that when people finally leave Haiti, they need some time to acclimate to civilized society. 
Haitians that came in other generations have been more successful, more education oriented, more business educated, and just more prone to be successful. Unfortunately, the Haitians that are coming today are coming from a completely different world. And honestly, the same can be said about Cubans, Venezuelans, and other people coming to the United States today, as the conditions in Latin America have deteriorated greatly over the last few years. And then on top of that, legally, the United States and states like Florida are making it purposely more difficult for these people, which means that the outcome economically and just their general success is really undetermined, difficult, and challenging for these people. It's not like in the past where the American dream existed. Today, the American dream has been closed, the doors are shut, and they're not letting other people come here and be successful. We live in a world where hardworking, successful people have the opportunities denied. And while people who are born here U.S. citizens many times end up plagued with their own addictions and lack of success. And that's the irony of this whole thing, that here we have people who are hardworking, wanting to do something with their lives, but they're giving zero opportunity. When you give them the opportunity, they become very productive members of society. But while we shut the door on some people wanting to be successful, we're stuck with the ones who refuse to do anything with their own lives. Even though they were born in the country that gives you opportunity, they've done nothing with it. Rather the state of Florida tries to block it or not, Haitians will always come to Florida. And across the United States, people have become very verbally abusive of Haitian people. But here in Florida, we let them have their own little community to see what they would do with it. And look at how successful these communities have been. When you look at a place like Little Haiti today with real estate booming, you look at places like Broward County, some of the safest counties in the entire state of Florida, with the lowest percentages of addiction, you can really see the difference between a people that want a slice of the American dream and people who were given the American dream by birth, but have done nothing successful with their lives. In the case of Florida, they don't even want their own white people here. If you're a poor white person, they're trying to get rid of you. Florida's trying to get rid of the homeless whites. They're trying to get rid of the poor whites. Now they're going off their elderly people in condos. If Florida doesn't love their own white people... What makes you think they're going to love a Haitian? And that's where the situation in Florida, they're trying to get rid of the people that are from here. So imagine what they're going to think about somebody who's not from here. Challenging times for sure. Florida simply isn't going to do anything for these Haitians. They're better off going to New York. They're better off going to California. They're better off going to Canada or Mexico where they're actually going to be treated like human beings. The state of Florida continues its war on culture I don't really know what to call what the state of Florida is doing right now, but it's somewhat of an economical genocide. I don't particularly think we're doing a favor to Florida by keeping these Haitians out, but they're definitely doing these Haitians a favor by making sure they end up somewhere better. It's crazy to think that Haitians and Cubans pretty much founded the economical powerhouse of South Florida, and now we're not even wanted in the own economy that we created. The wet foot, dry foot law allowed Cubans to have a legal access to become citizens simply by touching foot in Florida. This law was then to encourage Cubans to come to the United States and flee the communist regime. However, Obama, on his last day in office, got rid of the wet foot, dry foot law, which gave Cubans this special status. The reason Obama got rid of that law was because Cubans were predominantly voting Republican. They're voting for a party that's doing nothing for them. So we can see over the trajectory of the years, whether Cubans or Haitians have been nothing more than, well, unfortunately, guinea pigs for politicians, which they can use to win elections. But in the reality, when you look at the analytics for income and livelihood, living standards and living conditions in these communities, you can tell they're completely abandoned. Florida used to be a swing state. It could go in either direction. Politicians used to have to come to South Florida, listen to Cubans and Haitians before they could decide what they were going to do, because without their support, you couldn't win an election. So we can see how over the years, Cubans and Haitians, which were privileged and powerful politically, have become almost nothing in the state of Florida over the last 15 years. The state of Florida, which used to welcome these communities, today is set against them. How does a community that used to be so powerful today lose just about all its political influence and now these communities are no longer going to be entering the state of Florida, at least not 
legally. But what people don't understand that while the state of Florida as a governor, let's say, is putting on a show, sending Florida troopers to the Florida Keys and just putting on this big show of we're doing everything we can to stop illegal immigration, baby. There is plenty of illegal communities already established in the state of Florida. And the fact that Ron DeSantis has been governor hasn't really done anything to get rid of these communities. Immokalee, Bonita Springs, Fellsmore, Wachula, just to name a few. Take Collier County, the city of Naples sits in this county, right? Along the coast, every single Republican in the United States has a beachfront home in Naples, Florida. That millionaire's role is full of senators, all types of powerful Republicans have their homes in Naples, Florida, along the beach. Who cuts the grass? Who trims the bushes on those properties? Illegal Guatemalans. Who mows those people's lawns? Who trims their bushes? Who cleans their pools? Who paints their houses? Who watches over these people's properties when they're not there? The level of hypocrisy is unreal. On one hand, they tell people they're against illegal immigration. But go to Naples, Florida, where all these rich Republicans live that are in charge of making those statements and see who's working on those properties.